apocalypse, the Greek word for that is basically the revealing, the unfolding, the opening up, the revelation. In other words, things that have been hidden both in history and even to the prophets are now coming to light. So before we even go there, I want to remind everybody that we do a great disservice to the Lord Jesus Christ when we allow the people to steal the book of Revelation when they think it's just an end-time plan for doom and gloom and destruction. The book of Revelation starts out that it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Bruce, I want to read the first chapter of Revelation before we get into the prophetic word and where we're at as a nation and where we're going as a nation. I'm going to share some prophecies tonight that I think the Lord has, has I just found my file. I was praying about it, and over the years I've lost a lot of the words that the Lord has given me. One of the brothers gave me a word that I had uh, spoken on the radio in 2005, and he was kind enough. But I found a couple of them that I've, I've been praying over and praying over. And uh, let's just say this, my filing system leaves a little bit to be desired, and that's not even honest. It leaves a lot to be desired. I do everything the uh, old handwritten way, but let's start, let's start with Revelation chapter 1. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, the world steals the book of Revelation, even all the stuff you see on the History Channel and the Discovery Channel, and they make it something other than it is. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, yesterday and today I've been praying, oh God, open the eyes of your people that they might behold the king they claim. And I want to hear say that again. Oh, God, open the eyes of your people that they might, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically be, see and, and perceive the, the, the king they claim. In other words, most people can, uh, you know, imagine Jesus, but we're not to rely on our vain imaginations. We're to see him as he really is. So I'm going to read the first chapter of Revelation. We've got plenty of time tonight. We've got three hours. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. John, who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, us. Amen. Jesus speaking, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation, I want people to understand that, companion in tribulation, the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the isle called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that uh, was speaking to me. It actually says that spake me, but I'm just making it easier. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as a sun that shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest my hand, right hand, and the uh, seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars of the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, Bruce, I want to go to, before we get going, we're talking about ISAB tonight, 
and the anointing oil to hear. We'll get to this uh, parable of having ears to hear and eyes to see and uh, hear not and seeing not. But right now, we need to go to Revelation chapter 3, and then we'll get into some prophetic words, and I'll go where I believe the Lord is leading us. I was blessed to have uh, Pastor uh, John Kyle and Linda pray, and they're praying right now for this, and others, uh, Daryl and everyone, Romy, the intercessors are out there. Diana, thank you. I thank you, Sue. I thank you so much. Uh, Manette for praying for tonight. These are people that are praying and fasting and calling on God for his message to come forth. So I understand this. I understand that it's a very uh, sobering time in the body of Christ because we've now seen so many things coming into play that so many prophesied both in antiquity and in the present or the last hundred years. Now, Revelation 3, 14, 22 says this, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, lukewarm that's what Laodicean uh, they were known for these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot I would you were cold or hot so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will spew you out of my mouth that means literally vomit you out of my mouth because you say I'm rich increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou are wretched or I'm sorry wretched miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy me the gold, gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness does not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in with him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, Bruce, we're at a defining moment in history. We've seen a man reading his Bible arrested in California. We're seeing children, as I think as young as four years and six years old, being arrested for silly little child's play that yes. has now become so in your face. The vilification, I want to share everything. The testament with everyone, I want to share this with everyone. If you are lifting up Jesus by not only your life and the word and proclaiming him boldly, then the testimony of prophecy the spirit of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And when we lift up Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit's uh, function, anointing, and joy to bring many into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We have silence in the church as men who simply read their Bible are beaten up by the thugs and taken to jail. We have people that have protests in front of abortion clinics, some having, spending, having to have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to protect themselves and defend themselves in court. We now have the time that the apostle wrote about, that perilous times would come, and the spirit of lawlessness was in the land, and when each man does that which is right in his own sight. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to offer to you tonight some prophecies. I'm not going to tell you when they were written, maybe until the end of the show, but we're going to go into the timing that is at hand because we need ISAB. We need the Lord to anoint our eyes that we might see. We need the Lord to anoint our ears that we might hear because there's a lot of people that are basically just trying to say, I see no evil, I hear no evil, I speak no evil, and everything's fine. If we just join together with all the religions of the world, won't we be one big happy family? Not. I think that the preachers in America – who have basically failed to prepare their people for the times ahead, have set their people up not only for failure, but I'm going to say this, for eternal damnation. I cannot tell you, Bruce, how this burns in my heart tonight. Yes. I was thinking about the damned. And the damned, uh, you know, hell is not some figment of imagination. I'm not going to argue with people who don't believe in hell. They don't believe in eternal damnation. Actually, they don't believe in anything except maybe the uh, that the aliens will come and save them. And by the way... Tom Horn is changing. Uh, he'll be on Wednesday night with us on Omega Man, and we're going to go in the first hour immediately into the uh, secrecy of the Vatican and the extraterrestrial disclosure and how it's going to shake up the world as it even takes place right now and all this stuff about 
Petrus Romanus and all that. But tonight, before we get to that on Wednesday, now, we're going to talk about Jesus. And I want to I read something. I'm not going to tell you when this is written, okay? But I, but I want people to try these words, to test these words. People say, well, uh, you know, I don't like this prophecy stuff. God doesn't speak to any man. Well, then you're calling Jesus a liar because Jesus said, his sheep near, hear his voice and another will they not follow. If they're following another, they are not his sheep. For thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Behold, I have reserved the majority of my judgments and held them in my treasury until now. For hear this, O land that has forsaken me and done great wickedness in my sight. The keys to my reserved judgment have now been unlocked and great darkness will come against you. Your food supply will waste away before you, yet you will not notice it until it is too late. Your weather will turn against you in unparalleled violence, damage and destruction, and men will blame it on this or that but they will not acknowledge their sin or transgression before the Lord God of heaven. Disease, plague, and pestilence will be multiplied throughout the land where at first thousands will become sick, but as the time progresses, rapidly millions will die. Have I, the Lord, not declared that I will use the very devices of the wicked and the evil one to judge themselves? Yea, they shall be taken away by their own craftiness. Considering, and I'm sorry, concerning the condition of my church that dines deliciously at the, words, uh, at the world's plate, hear the word of the Lord. I will prune them as a vine dresser seeks to cut back the tree branches that don't bear fruit, so that the new blossoms can come forth at their approved and appointed time. Be assured of this, my people, that the commercial temples of mammon that you now see before you will not be around much longer to cast a stumbling block before my people and profane my name before this nation. My people, have you not heard the judgment must begin at my house? You read this, but you do not understand that I, even I, the Lord, will bring down these abominable, his words, habitations of devils. For thus saith the Lord God of heaven, I will yet return to my people in great glory and in great power, with mighty miracles and my strong arm of deliverance, to build up and empower my people for this great end-time confrontation and destruction of the powers of darkness. Therefore, repent, turn your hearts and eyes upon me. Taste and see that the Lord God of heaven is mighty, and that I watch over you with my mighty arm of deliverance. Know this, that my beloved son Jesus is coming for a people without spot or wrinkle, but who also work the works of God. It was not the hand of man that delivered the great men and women of faith, but it was me. I love you, my children, with a love that transcends all eternity. You were brought forth by my love. You will be kept by my power. You'll be victorious by my blood. Rejoice, O ye heavens, for the King of glory has arisen to go forth and restore, refresh and renew his beloved saints. When would you, I, I'll, I'll tell this one, but I won't tell the rest of them, because I think it, what I'm going to show is how timeless these are, but how much ahead of the curve these words were. When do you think that was given to me, Bruce? Hmm. Just take a wild guess. It's not, you know, I'm not going to keep anybody in suspense. 20 years ago? Yep. And that's what I think people need to understand, ladies and gentlemen. This was before everyone came on the boat. You know, it's funny because everybody wants to seemingly, in brotherly love, sink my ship of faith, but they don't have one to climb into except integrating. When I was in prayer this week, Bruce, mm -hmm. I want to share something. And this is a caution and a word. You take it to the Lord. But the Lord, I said, Lord, how do I tell who's real in the days of head, ahead? How do I tell who to trust and not trust? I'm with Ronald Reagan on this statement, trust but verify. I have been absolutely uh, foolish in my lack of discernment and trusting where I should not have trust. It's got me into multiple life and death situations, and had it not been for the Lord, I'd not be speaking this tonight. But one of the keys is this, is that we can no longer turn to men for their opinions, including me. I'm heralding, I'm calling, excuse me, calling out. I'm performing uh, tonight the role of the watchman, but I have not veered from that, Bruce, since I was called to that ministry almost 40 years ago. Yes. And so the thing that I want people to understand is when these prophecies were given, a lot of this stuff wasn't happening. And it wasn't happening. Now, let me ask you this. If friendship with the world is enmity with God, is the purpose-driven church at, at odds with God? 
Are they at odds with the king of glory? And are they opposing him by the very uh, negating of what Jesus said? It's almost like, well, poor Jesus. He didn't really understand the times we were going to live in. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. For those who believe that in slamming, and I, I see it all the time, not just against me, but anybody, it doesn't matter who, is trying to proclaim and to get people's lives out of harm's way and get people to repent, the crows will come on the different boards. And I am totally, again, telling you this. No one in this country said sooner than I did, and this is to the praise and God of glory of the living God, to his glory, because, listen, I told people, the entire Facebook scenario, the entire MySpace, the social networking site, it was all designed and implemented through the oversight of Marcus Wolf, either yes. directly or indirectly. He was the head of the East German Stasi. And for all of you cold warriors out there, you, uh, you're more than familiar than I, than I am with the policies and the proficiencies of Marcus Wolf. His uh, biography should be a must-read for everybody because you'd swear it's modern day. We now live in the quintessential uh, uh, surveillance society that is so adept. It is the devil's attempt at being omnipresent and omniscient, all-knowing. And so the point is that we are seeing now the very uh, uh, chains of slavery soon to be executioner's writs being placed into uh, modern society, and nothing is new under the sun. So when I gave that uh, prophecy a long time ago, people would not believe it. They didn't believe it then. Some people don't believe it now. I have proof, and by the way, I'll, a couple of these, you can go and look up the documents from a long time ago. And uh, one of them, the ones was it was interesting to me, was declare unto your nation this word. Now, this one was given in 1992. By the way, the other one was given in 1987, and another one was given in 1997. But this one is called declare unto your nation this word. It's a horrible thing. I've even been mocked by those who would try and bribe me, saying, so how do you feel, Steve? Now, this is a literal conversation I was given. I want people to understand something. I'm criticized for a lot of stuff, but I want you to share this. If you'd spend more time praising God and, and getting to know him than criticizing myself or Hawk or whoever, Bruce, or whoever you want to criticize, and, and I'm not even speaking from a defensive mode, but I said to the Lord, let me go back and finish. I said, Lord, who do I trust and not trust? He said, Steve, any man that attacks his brother in a nameless and shameless way, anyone who incites uh, uh, discord, or forgive me, a uh, discord amongst the brethren. He said, "Give him my word. These seven things are an abomination to the Lord." God says, "You are an abomination." So, Bruce, let me share this. Here's something I want to share with people. So yes. If I were to give 40 years of practical understanding, I was accused recently, and and this uh, this is an illustration. So I'm not bitter. I of, of uh, holding bitterness against a man I refused to talk to for 20 years because he never asked me to forgive him when he betrayed me. I have forgiven him. It's not a question of uh, betrayal. Then his pal called me and said, listen, I said, this is not a question of unforgiveness. This is a question of unrepentance or non-repentance amongst the offending party. I went on with my life. I released the guy. And Amen. the interesting thing is, is that what I notice now is what I notice is the uh, attacks are coming more fast and furious. But those who wanted to bribe me said this. They said, Steve, why don't you give it up? And I said, you know, I, and I, I had to go through a third party. I said, would you tell them I think I'm just about ready to? I'm not saying I'm going to give it up and take 50 million or 100 or whatever the offer is. But the point is, as I said, listen, I understand one thing. That's the number one goal is to be obedient. Now, the people asked me this, and it was kind of a taunt. And I guess it was actually kind of an honest statement from their part. Not that it's 99% or 100% honest, but they said, how is it that you have seen, and we know that you've seen it, and trust me, these people live in the world where they can enter into realms and dimensions that most people don't even know exist. You, well, you want to believe it? Fine. You don't? Fine. But I can tell you this, just go look up Chronovisor and find out of how it's possible to peer back in time. It's quantum physics. The thing was proposed in, I think, uh, you know, uh, 70 years ago. So yeah, I've done my homework. You do yours. But they said, how is it that you still want to, and here's their words, okay, how is it that you still 
try and preach to them that have no ears. And then they said, and even those that mock you. And you see, now, doesn't that sound like maybe Satan saying, uh, you know, something there? Yes. And I, I have to agree, Bruce, that, that in one point I do agree. And the Bible says, by the way, agree with your adversary. What, when they speak the truth, it's true. It's not the application that is applicable to me, but it is the truth. So my answer is simply this. I must do that which my king has commanded me. I obviously will do what I can do until I can no longer take it. But now I'm at the point, ladies and gentlemen, where my prayer before the Lord, and thank you intercessors who pray for me, is that what do the watchmen do when everything they've warned about is in play and in place? If you would have told people they'd be arresting four- and six-year-olds ten years ago, you'd be called crazy. If you would have been uh, told that they'd be arresting somebody in a public spot for opening a Bible, you'd be called crazy. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, every day the craziness becomes the norm, and that the righteousness, the faithfulness, and the history of godliness is remembered no more. I actually understand the Jesus statement and the words of our Lord when he said, when the Lord returns, will he find faith in the earth? You know, Bruce, people use this to me, at me all the time. They try to encourage me. Blessed are you when all men speak evil of you for my name's sake. Now, I believe that's the word of God. Jesus said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. But what I've seen is, I've seen the most amazing example of the, um, how do I say this tactfully? I'm really praying about being tactful tonight, by the way. Uh, I've seen the emasculation and the feminization of men that are, ab they quake in their boots. I've actually gotten emails from wives, and then their pathetic husbands have to come to the wife's defense because a wife has dominated them to the point that uh, she's saying, now you call that Steve, that evil Steve, and tell him where to get right. Well, the point is, Bruce, is I'm telling you this to say all this, ladies and gentlemen, yes. that we have a commandment. We have the admonishment to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And where is the church? You know what the church is doing? It's too busy kissing the devil's butt. That's right. And I say that one more time. It's too busy kissing the devil's butt. There's only one type of unity, and that's unity in the Holy Spirit. It is not the unity that can come by men just agreeing, well, let's just all say Buddha's cool and all the Hindu gods are cool and everybody's cool, but Jesus, we don't even mention Jesus because we don't want to acknowledge even his name because we know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so tonight, I want to give you guys words from the Lord, and you take them to the Lord. You see, what's happening, Bruce, is everybody wants to be spoon-fed. And Paul says, I, I, I want to uh, talk to you as mature adults, but you still don't even understand the basics of faith, and, and so I've got to treat you as babies. I told a friend of mine, I still know a woman that's breastfeeding her, her 38-year-old daughter and, and her 32-year-old son. I mean, they're still babies. The point is, is we need to have. We need to have a maturity that isn't there. Now, I'm going to read this word, Bruce. These are all prophecies the Lord gave to me over the last 30 years, okay? Before the foundations of the world, I set boundaries for all that is created. The sand of the sea, the stars in the sky, all creation had, be, had been created in uh, righteousness until sin entered through the corruption of your parents, Adam and Eve. Obedience is liberty. Disobedience brings death. Now the time allotted to your country has run out. Hear the word of the Lord. When I send you warnings through my word and through my servants, it is to declare my intentions and make them plain before you. Those who love me have I engraved upon uh, my palms. You were created in an act of my love, and it's that very same love that will cause me to keep you from perishing and being consumed by the unrelenting appetite of hell. But my people are being consumed by the world's desires, lust, greed, envy, anger, bitterness, strife, and perversion are snares laid before your past. You are asleep. Awake, awake, and shake off the slumber of death, and allow me to deliver you from the traps and snares of the evil one. For yet in a little while, listen to this, your country will see the judgment of Almighty God upon its idols. I will punish America, and yet for my great namesake will I deliver those whose hearts are stayed upon me and cry out to me for my deliverance. Every aspect of your lives will change. 
Your children will be brought up in a totally different world, and they will not remember that which came before them. Daily, Satan steals the souls of thousands as your children listen to the melody of madness and the music of their day. Satan knows the power of music and beckons your loved ones with a lullaby of perdition. When Israel burned their children in the arms of Moloch and sacrificed to idols, I sent them into captivity and punished them severely. Yet each day, my heritage, your children, are being swept away, their hearts stolen, their lives destroyed, while they yet remain in the womb. The government of your land worship at the altar of Mammon. The evil they do is an affront to my righteousness, an attack upon my throne, and now hear their judgment. In one day, I will bring down their financial system. The entire world will stand in awe. The politicians will run to and fro, unable to do anything to stop the onslaught of my judgment. Your country will come to a virtual standstill. Your country, uh, no planes will fly, no trains will run, no trucks will run. As food runs out, millions will flee the cities as drought and famine begin to take hold. Total chaos will ensue. Panic will break forth, and there will be much death and sorrow. As those who fall in the city die, plague will break out, and uh, sorry, plague will break forth, and uh, uh, and then there will be much death as pestilence will follow. Millions will wander your highways. Now, this is the actual vision the Lord gave me. Millions will wander your highways and byways searching for food just to continue living. The wild beasts and the tribes of men will pursue an attack and take away even that little which those fleeing possess. Now, and, and, and you'll know the date of this. I'll just tell you the date. June 27, 1992. Now I will speak concerning the decision of your Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court, to totally take away prayer from school. As the last grains of sand have finally fallen through the hourglass, the emptiness and barrenness of America's spirituality is made known. The power structure has declared that they will not have me to rule over them, so they will get what they worship. Satan comes to destroy them, and they clap their hands in praise to he who will only damn them. When the legal system of its day sends my son to death, all the powers of hell gathered around the cross. This is amazing to me. That special day. The, they congratulated themselves, and they were finally in control. That they were finally in control, that Jesus was finished. But little did they know they were celebrating their own destruction. For I raised the son of my love through my power, and Jesus defeated all principalities, powers, and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave away from Satan. Even the prince of darkness knows that his time is short and therefore goes about as a ravenous lion, consuming all that will not stand and face him in the power of my might. Stand therefore, my children, in holiness, in obedience and gratefulness, and watch through the eyes of a repentant heart the great things the Lord God of heaven will do on your behalf if you will turn from your wicked ways, putting away the lust of your flesh and the pride of life. By me shepherds become kings. Housewives, boy, was this one right on, become warriors. The vilest are set free, that's me, through forgiveness. You have only to call on me with all your heart. I am the Lord God, your deliverer, and will not forsake you. June 27, 1992. Now, it's got to be obvious that basically the Lord has a controversy with the United States of America. While well, people are still arguing, is America mystery Babylon, financial Babylon, if you will, I understand what the teachers teach in dispensationalism, that Iraq and Babylon is going to be rebuilt. But if you even know the, your scripture very well, you know that Jesus called Jerusalem Babylon. So there, are historic, there is historic Babylon, there's spiritual Babylon, there's physical Babylon, and there is economic Babylon. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you tonight is this is the message. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you've, I've got to speak tonight what you want me to speak. I could speak on the stuff that people like to hear me talk about. What is it, O heart of Almighty God, that you want? And it's the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm saying, I'm encouraging, I'm pleading, and I'm also provoking those of you that think that by some kind of a weasel life, and I talk about a weasel life, that's my terminology for those who are hiding out, never wanting to be known, using anonymous names so that they, the, the quote, uh, authorities don't know who you are. Believe me, when you file with any of the boards and you give them your real name and address, Every one of those boards is swept every single second in real time. They know who you are, so you might as well stand up for Jesus. You know, again, Bruce, 
the Bible. I love King David. I love the Psalms. Man, I yes. love the Word of God. It's the only thing that sustains me, you know, in all the times that people have abandoned me, in all the times that people have betrayed me. Look, I've gone through a lot of, a lot of stuff, and, and 40 years, I can tell you, you go through a lot of stuff. I think I hit the wilderness from the first day I met Jesus. And by the way, when I saw Jesus, it was exactly as the book of Revelation. I fell at his feet as dead. He wasn't in blue jeans and a T-shirt. He was in his glory. And I could not get up in his presence until he lifted me up. And I asked, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, your Savior. And I'd only asked him into my heart at a Hal Lindsey meeting several hours before that. So listen, here's the thing. We're going to talk to him out, uh, tonight about having eyes to see and see not, having ears to hear and hear not. And one of the things I think is so tragic is, is that this, is that if people would understand that every minute the eyes of the Lord, listen to this, uh, Psalm 34, 14 through 16, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And this is something that I think most people don't understand, Bruce. If they call themselves a Christian, there is a day of reckoning coming. There is a day, the judgment seat of Christ, the most pathetic, I think. And I'm, I'm going to say something here, and I, if it's offensive, it's not being it's sent for only illustrative purposes. But the most offensive thing I've ever heard come from a purported Christian is when he said, I don't have to do anything. I'm saved by grace. And I sent him back uh, an email saying, James, and he said, and I believe in God. And I sent him back saying, James, the book of James quoted, the devil believes in God and trembles. The point is, is that there is this lack of accountability. And tonight, if we get the time, and I'm, I'm praying we have the time, we're going to go into HDTV, Infrasonics, and all of the noise that's out there, white noise, pink noise. And some of you in the world of uh, clandestine operations, more than I know what pink noise is, the point is, is that we're talking about the very principles and foundations of the end time scenario. Now, when we talk about the vile judgment, the trumpet judgments, the bold judgments, we're talking about there's only one that was worthy to open that up and release that knowledge to mankind. I believe those were the very things that Daniel was not allowed to repeat or write that he was told to seal it up, Daniel, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. And little did Daniel know at that moment that it would be John on the island of Patmos that would be given the vision and would literally see the Lamb of God, Almighty God's Son, and, and the Lamb of God, Jesus, coming onto the scene, who is worthy, who is worthy, they cried, cried out, excuse me, and it's the Lamb of God that can open the seals. So, Bruce, there is accountability that is so lacking, but the tragedy is it's not just the accountability, it's the acknowledgement of Jesus. I think the wonderful thing about Omega Man Radio is now I will hear from 60 to 70 nations of the world, usually within a week or two, and how many people in Australia, greetings to the brethren in Australia, greetings to the brethren in Indonesia, greetings to the brethren in China, Greetings to the brethren in New Zealand. Greetings to the brethren that are even gathered tonight listening to this in South Africa. Greetings to those of you who are in, uh, in Hungary. Greetings to those of you who are in all the former Soviet bloc republics. Because the time of the Lord's uh, calling for the rising up of the people that know him and the time that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits is here. And that's exactly what we're talking about right now, is the time of God's anointing, appointing, revelation, and power. So, Bruce, as, as you look right now where you see the church, what are the most troubling things to you? You're on the radio. You have multiple shows going on the week. But do you think, and, and, and this isn't a trick question, but do you think, does it indicate that more people are starting to see that they're accountable to the Lord Jesus for what they do? Steve, uh, certainly we are going to be accountable. We're either going to be appearing at the great white throne judgment and then get cast on the lake of fire, or if we know Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior, we appear at the judgment seat of Christ. And we've got to give an accounting for everything we've done here. So that to that guy that said that it's all about grace, well, salvation is by grace and not works lest any man should boast, but then faith without works is dead. 
And we've been given a mandate and directed by the Lord Jesus Christ to occupy till he comes, and there's certain things that we should be doing. And if we're not, we're like the servant. And Jesus uh, described in the parable where the master gave instructions, and he went off to a faraway land, and you know, he was gone a long time, and the servant started to uh, gallivant and party, paraphrased. And he came back, and you know, he tore into him, cast him into outer darkness. They were found not doing what he had given them instructions to do. And so uh, to the church today, yeah, we've got a big problem out there, Steve. We've got uh, the purpose-driven life out there where they basically want people to compromise, okay, in, in favor of so we can all get along. And, I mean, what apostasy that is. You know, let's, uh, we're all worshiping the same God, they'll tell you. You know, Muslim, Christian, pagan, we're not all worshiping the same God, clearly. The Muslims worship a demon called Allah. But well, we've got compromise in the church, Steve. We've got a group that already believes that we're in the new millennium and that uh, Jesus Christ has already come back. There's no tribulation to go through. There's no antichrist. There's no mark of the beast. They're out there just re rejoicing and having a party. You've got another group that um, is, is totally in the matrix, asleep. They believe that we don't need to talk about anything that we're talking about tonight, and we don't even need to read Revelations because we're not going to be here for it. Then we've got others that are just living their best life now, and it's like the Philistines have shown up, and they're asking, uh, who's going to come up and fight Goliath here? And, Steve, nobody is picking up the sword by and large and going up against Goliath, and it's a shame. And what are we going to say when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an accounting? We're going to, it's going to be a sorry state. We may have made it in to heaven, but we'll lose our reward. You know, uh, I may have said this story before, but uh, you know Michael Boldea, the uh, son of, uh, grandson of Dimitri Dudominsky? Yes. Great man of God. You know, he uh, was an interpreter for his grandfather from about age 12. Went around the country with him for, you know, many years. And he got to the point a few years ago, he said, well, you know, I've been serving the Lord for over 25 years. I think my job's done. And the Lord showed him a vision. He took him over to a ravine, had him look down into the canyon, and he looked down and saw all these warriors around the campfire sharpening the swords, had their tents, their fires lit there. And he said, uh, what do you see? He said, it looks like uh, an army preparing for battle. The angel said, C correct. Now, what would you call a soldier who on the eve of battle abandons his post and goes AWOL. You know, AWOL basically, right? He says, now, I train you for this time. You can stay in the battle, or you can leave and lose your reward. And I think we're, we're approaching that right now. I believe the greatest war that's ever been fought on this earth is about to be waged, Steve, and the church is not prepared. Many are going to faint when the persecution comes. You mentioned the man that was arrested for reading the, uh, the Word of God. We've got the, the people overseas are being put in jail in some of these Arab countries for standing up for Jesus. We're in some serious trouble here. If we don't get sober and serious and uh, get prepared so that we can endure till the end and, and uh, occupy till Jesus Christ comes, I see that's where we are in the church. I, I think uh, uh, God have mercy. If God didn't give us some more time, it would be just mass slaughter because very few are awake and know what time it is. Bruce, when I saw Jesus face to face and uh, he gave me a Joseph's ministry, I didn't know anything seriously about the Bible, about Joseph, about the end times. I knew nothing. I was the president of the most vile fraternity on MSU campus. Uh, we were kicked off, lost our charter. I was before the conduct. This is before I got saved. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But I was before the conduct board, I think, more than anybody in the history of MSU, Montana State University. Yes, sir. And so the thing is, is that when I got saved, it took kind of, uh, you know, the university by uh, surprise because where I used to be, you know, known as the guy that threw the best parties. I mean, we didn't throw parties in, in those days in like the late uh, uh, 1969, 70, 71. I got saved in 1972. That cost them the thousands of dollars. We, we, we went, you know, full cabin, okay? We, uh, let's just say this, we threw the parties. But the point that I'm trying to make in all this is that when I met Jesus, I was absolutely redeemed out of a life of debauchery, okay? Yes, I sir. can't even tell my nickname because it's so profane. 
I only will talk about the saving grace of Jesus, but suffice it to say, I had a name that was so descriptive that it would leave no one's imagination. Now, I don't glory in that, but what I'm saying, when I see Jesus and he says, I'm giving you a Joseph's ministry, and you're going to prepare my people for the end time, and that's 40 years ago, almost to the date, I think I got saved in March, about, you know, mid-March, uh, towards the end of March, and the point is, is that I've been doing exactly what he's called me to do for 40 years. Amen. And so the thing that I'm trying to tell people is this, is that the two most precious commodities, I think the very first talk radio show I stated on, uh, I was on KHNC in Johnstown, Colorado. I don't even remember the name of my show in those days. Maybe it was called Blueprint for Survival or something. Maybe that was it. But I said the two most precious commodities leading up to the return of Jesus. This is now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, about 18, 19 years ago. There are people that know how long I've been on the radio. I don't know. I just keep asking Hawk. Now, Hawk, when did you first listen to me? <laughs> you know, I'm not kidding you. Uh, you know, I, that just is the way I look at the events, not the time necessarily associated with. That's why I'm reading the dates of these prophecies. But the point being is, the Lord said, the two most precious commodities will be fresh water and food. Oh, yes statement okay and i said this 40 i'm sorry forgive me i said it uh 19 years ago i said the most precious commodity we water you will drink water that in the old days you only used to walk through with your boots on oh my goodness so the thing is is that uh uh you know having been in the food business the storage food business and as one of the originators of the prepper movement oh yes self-reliant i mean there are people that still remember my ads and American Survival Guide, and I kind of absolutely, I'm just telling people, you have the right to know. You see, it's interesting that all my critics that get on talk radio, where were they 17, 18, 19 years ago? As a matter of fact, where were they five years ago? And when I kept telling people, buy your silver at $3.85, $3 buy your gold at $285, uh, dollars, you know, the the bottom line is, is I was, you know, I was mocked, and even one guy went so far as saying he can't wait to see my coffin with platinum nails in it. Okay, well, I guess, you know, uh, by the way, that that same year, I think platinum rose from three hundred eighty-five dollars an ounce to two thousand dollars. Oh yes. So the point is, is this, is that what what's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, if you will realize that the people that are criticizing anyone, including me. Look, this isn't just to get people not to criticize me. My critics are always going to be there, okay? But the point is, is if you see them doing that, and I'm bringing you the word of the Lord and God witnesses to it, then if you're listening to that, and if you're then going on other boards and, and bearing witness, false witness against me, I'm telling you this, you better check your salvation, because God is not going to wink at that. He says it's an abomination to sow discord amongst the brethren. Amen. And why I'm saying that is I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what word do I have for tonight? This isn't about me tonight. Of course, I'm the one talking. But I, I think that the illustrations I've seen, I actually believe I've seen so, um, so many amazing things. And for everyone's record, I didn't want to go on talk radio. Those of you who have listened to me, I got off, I got back on, I was premature sometimes. I absolutely did not want to do talk radio. But I said, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. So when I started writing the different books and getting them out, then I went on talk radio, I was interviewed, and the rest, you know, basically led into my own show. I did three hours a day. I did all this stuff. And in all in all, I thank the Lord for one thing that's never changed and never will change by the grace of God, because that is the immutable power of the name of Jesus. Amen say something you guys jesus is some people say well it's yeshua well when jesus appeared to me and he said i am jesus your savior if he would have said yeshua hamashiach i probably would have said what you know <laughs> now i understand that i and, and then i get the people that would say well you couldn't have seen jesus because Jesus' name is zeus i can tell you this the lead rabbi that just passed away saw the name of jesus in the bible codes and even the number of each consonant in the specific uh, references in Isaiah 58 spelled out Yeshua, and I have no problem with Yeshua. I'm only telling you this to tell you that you can make a God in your own image, or you can read the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the heart of the Father. 
When Solomon had a choice of any choice in the world what to ask God for, he asked for a discerning heart that he might discern this great a people. And Bruce, most people forget this. In the Second Chronicles 16.9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth hmm. to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth now you'll have wars. It, it, the, the history of the Old Testament, the New Testament, is God made a difference and Jesus makes all the difference in eternity. Yes. That's my and, and, and look, ladies and gentlemen, if you think by keeping quiet about Jesus, you're doing God a favor, I'll remind you of a word. Jesus said, if you won't confess me before men, I won't confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. That's right. And absolutely the word of God. It's not just me. It's the word of God. Steve, there is no name more hated anywhere in the world than Jesus Christ. Go yep. figure. It's because that's the Son of God. Oh, hey, Bruce, where where can people go? I'm getting people saying they can't get on the streams. Where's the best place for them to go right now? Okay, can... there are two places that you can listen to the broadcast, folks. You can go to omegamanradio.com, or you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash omegamanradio. Uh, we're streaming through both right now. If you're having trouble with your browser, uh, in one, go over to the alternate system. Some people need to update their software. They may be using an outdated browser, and uh, therefore the widget may not work at Omega Man Radio, but blogtalkradio.com is our uh, backup system, and that's uh, clearly streaming. If someone wants to email me, omegamanradio at yahoo.com, I can walk you through some specifics. But, uh, no, we're broadcasting live, folks. This is a live broadcast. This is episode 618. Guest is Steve Quell, stevequell.com. Steve, it is uh, it is late in the hour uh, in the um, for for America, and the things are just moving fast. Can you believe how fast this year is going by? I can because again, I, I can share this. I believe it's God's mercy that's speeding up the time. Jesus Himself said, "Except the days be short, and there be no flesh left alive." Bruce, when I first wrote Genetic Armageddon, and and I am going to make this claim. When the Lord said, Steve, I'll open the doors for you to speak, and I'll bring the people to you if you'll be faithful to warn my people, everybody laughed and jeered and thought I was going in some haywire cult because I was uh, talking about the reality of history and the, the uh, non-canon books of the Bible, canonical books of the Bible, the book of Enoch, the, the book of Giants. I even had two pastors take on a poor guy, one of our listeners, and, and just absolutely, they didn't refute what I said by, uh, by uh, uh, the scripture. They just basically blew it off and you know, basically said, he believes the giants are coming back to eat people on the earth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to YouTube videos and see people serving dead cadavers and practicing cannibalism or read about the guy that ate his uh, former crime mate and put the rest of his body through a uh, meat grinder. You see, Bruce, the, the bottom line is, is that Christians have become aseptic to the point where they no longer want to get their hands dirty. And God's saying, don't you understand you're in the most polluted world that exists? You're in the most disgusting time period, and my glory is what will wash you. My blood will bathe you. My power will fill you. If you'll but call upon my name, and they say, no, thank you, you know. Let me share this. This was a prophecy given uh, 15 years ago, okay? By the way, it's huh, weird. Uh, April 13, 1997. Thus saith the Lord God of heaven. Again, for those listening in, these are prophecies given to me over the last 20 years. Thus saith the Lord God of heaven. Very soon, everything you have become accustomed to will change. Nothing will be as it was. The very foundations of your nation have been destroyed. Notice that, ladies and gentlemen, 1997, past tense. Leaders from other lands cons conspire. They divide up the spoil. They are set to move against you, and by the surrender of the ungodly and profane leaders of your land, they have been given the green light to proceed. My people, do you not see the obvious? Foreign armies are within your borders. They have an alliance formed against you. They arm with cunning and treachery the rebellious. Those who hate me love death. They embrace death. They have made wickedness our mistress. I guarantee you I don't talk that way unless God 
gives it to me. I mean, these are not my thoughts. These are what the Lord said. Write what I give you, Steve. My people do not allow the evil one to paralyze. I'm sorry, my people do not allow the evil one to paralyze you with fear, indifference, or apathy. Arise, seek me with all your hearts. Quit gossiping. Well, it looks like they didn't take that one to heart 15 years ago. Still aren't doing it now. Why does each one, listen to this, Bruce, why does each one run to his neighbor saying, what do you think? Trying to find counsel at the hand of man. Come into my presence in total surrender and dependence. Seek me with all your heart and mind. Surrender your thoughts and entire being to me. Then will you be equipped and empowered by my Holy Spirit's anointing and be able to deal with this great peril that comes even now upon you. You feast while you should be fasting. You ignore the signs of the times that have made you aware of through my word that should be prompting you to prepare. You assume when instead you should be crying out to me for my revelation, my direction, and deliverance. What answer will you give to those who are dead in their trespasses and sin as the weather becomes more erratic, when the harvests are cut off, when the water turns to blood and are spoiled, when your cities are inflamed and destroyed from within and without? Have you not the signs of the times that have made you aware of through my word that should be prompting you to prepare? You assume when instead you should be crying out to me for my revelation, my direction, and deliverance. What answer will you give to those who are dead in their trespasses and sin as the weather becomes more erratic, when the harvests are cut off, when the water turns to blood and are spoiled, when your cities are inflamed and destroyed from within and without? Have you not seen, do you not hear of the thousands who are even now sick and dying of diseases, according to a man, uh, which were no longer a problem? My children, the Russians and Chinese have already come to your land. They have made an agreement to divide the land amongst themselves and send you into captivity. Pastor David was given a word of the Lord the other night. And, it, it, where, and, and listen, Pastor David was, I think, praying. I could be wrong here, but a number of days, maybe a week. And the Lord said, my people have been in bondage. Now they're going into captivity. You know? Do you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to tell everybody what that means because I saw what it meant, and I'll, I'll share some stuff. See, Bruce, sometimes I've learned that I cannot share what I want to share, and I get people telling me who have absolutely no credits to their name or any standing up for Jesus, tell us what you really know. And I said, you've done nothing what I've told you over 19 years. There's no reason to tell you what I haven't already told you because you've done nothing with it. It's the faithfulness and revelation that gives you continuing revelation. If you don't speak with the and then I love the crew that steals each man's words from another, puts their name on it, puts a book out, and just oh, yeah. absolutely takes it as their own, you know. But let me give you this. I want to read this again because uh, uh, my children, the Russians and Chinese have already come to your land. They have made an agreement to divide the land amongst themselves and send you into captivity. That means people in this country are going to go be slaves in other country. And for the women on the West Coast, if you go and listen to uh, Henry Groover's vision of the Chinese, when you put all of your particulars, I'm telling you this, whereas the old day the people in the West could order from the East through a Sears network, you on Facebook and MySpace have already been divided amongst the spoils. You probably can't receive that. But when you understand that you're going into captivity, except you, I'll tell you what, it literally causes me to weep. I saw the slaughter of untold millions of Americans. I saw it. I could smell it, Bruce. And then the Lord in his mercy said, but Steve, I'm going to take it all away from you except the things that you are to warn my people of. And as it gets played out in a, the time shortly before it happens, I will give you recall. And he said this to me, he said, and I have to do it because my people have not the ears or heart to embrace it. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, I read to you the, the scripture out of the lukewarm church. Jesus' words are, he's going to vomit you out. Are you lukewarm? That's your issue before the Lord God of heaven. Yes. Listen, here's something powerful, and this gets me. For those who would say, but God would never judge America, look at all the good she's done. Do you not know the word of the living God? If the wicked turn from their wickedness, I will remember their transgression no more. But if the righteous turn from the righteous way, they shall not be remembered as a righteous person or a land. I deal with what is, not what once was. Amen. Is that for a powerful word? It you know, sure is. Pastor David Langford calls those nuggets. I thought, man, Lord, 
I'm all hung up on what was, you know. And, and all of us who are dealing with our past, you know, I thank God for those of you that didn't have to come to the way I came by the past I had. For somebody who says, well, I don't have a testimony. I lived for Jesus from the time I was six. I said I would have given my eye teeth to live for Jesus by the time. But you know, Bruce, I stand on this. I stand on the fact that to them who have been forgiven much, they love much, okay? And he who gave it all for me, how dare I withhold from him? And I just refuse to do it, okay? Uh, you know, if I could be worthy of the title of uh, sold out, you know, uh, for Jesus, if, if, if I return, I remember one time I drove a blue car and people love this. They said, there goes quail in his baby blue. Look what God will do for you. OK, even my 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 scoundrel friends that I used to party into the wee hours of the week with not just days and nights, brothers, we did it for the week. OK. Uh, you know, they knew that something was different, and they could they, listen. They loved me when I was profane. They absolutely came undone when I became saved. Okay, but by the grace of God, when I was in the film uh, department, MSU Film and TV, uh, that's where I have degrees from. Um, movie making, still photography, uh, good night, a bunch of other stuff too. But the point is, is that our entire department got saved. Because and we, there were only about twenty five people, including the professors. That was pretty cool. Hey, that is. <laughs> and so they wondered, you know, where we were used to be the freaks on campus, and trust me, we earned that reputation. Bottom line is, you got a bunch of guys that are absolutely transformed. One guy would get so stoned he'd he'd, he'd fall up three flights of stairs, not down them. <laughs> I promise you. I mean, it can can something overcome gravity beyond electrogravitics? Well, this brother could, and I don't know how he did it. Steve, he, uh, you know. speaking of stoned, I need you to weigh in on something. There's quite an uh, a, uh, argument going on in our chat room. Even right at this moment, there's people that um, swear by the use of cannabis. They say they need it. You know, they, they need it for pain or for whatever reason. And um, is that not a door opener to uh, demonic spirits of mind control when we use pharmacia? Well, yes, and absolutely. And here's the thing, okay? Jesse Penn Lewis, and I'd encourage everybody to find us. I may be available on that War on the Saints. She says the most dangerous. Now, look, I, I can identify with the people, cancer patients and those who need something for pain. Do I speak this by permission of the Lord? No. But I speak it from someone who had such terrible migraines. I didn't use cannabis, but I had to go to the hospital so many times for morphine shots that because my blood pressure was life-threatening on multiple occasions. And thank God for those of you who prayed. And then the other guys would send me emails and say, I wish you would have died that night. God well, have mercy. But God saw otherwise, you know. But I, I'm going to share something with you. When people are genuinely like terminal patients, you know, I hate pain, okay? And I know there are people that cannot make it without it. I would only say this. I would trust that more than I'd trust something that man-made. Now, look, here's what I'm saying. I'm not a, a, a user of it, but neither can I deny the people who are, are in such severe pain. I've seen people who are, are literally in their deathbeds who can come up out of the beds. Now, I don't know what to say, Bruce. I'm not saying a license for it, but I understand it, okay? And then where is the difference between the herb of the field, you know, and, I mean, I've heard this argument, you know. I would say this. Because of the lack of power in the church, people turn to that. My prayer is for when there's so much power in the people of God, they no longer need that. I'm not a phony on that. I tr Listen, anything that will help. If you've ever seen someone in such horrific pain, a shot of morphine is the only thing that will stop it. I'm not opposed to that, Okay. I'm opposed to recreational drugs because mind-altering substances open up your uh, entire subconscious and conscious for demonic attack and or possession, influence, whatever the degree may be. Absolutely. If you do not have control of your mind, uh, then somebody else is going to control it. It's a demonic spirit. You know what I'm hearing? There's a rash of this going on, Steve, especially with the uh, soldiers coming back from these uh, war campaigns where they're traumatized, instead of getting the help that they need, many, which is Jesus Christ, many are being told to do things like transcendental meditation. And I heard Wynn Worley speak the other day on an old CD, and he said, these are the things which will cause instant insanity, because what people are doing is they're giving their mind over 
to the unclean spirits who then are very willing to come in and take up residence. And uh, I don't deny that people are under pain. What I'm here to tell you, though, folks, that's not your answer. Your answer is Jesus Christ. And you may not be able to get help out of your local churches. What you're saying, Steve, is true. You go to the local churches for help. Many of them went out there, and they're turned away. They're told there's nothing wrong with them. Or they need to go see a psychiatrist, but, uh, you know, the, the churches uh, don't deal with the root issues. And they're, they're not moving in the power to heal or to deliver in Jesus Christ's name. And that's why I go back to the original statement. We're in a really uh, serious situation here. We are. It's, 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 let, let me share this, too. I want to make sure everyone hears me loud and clear. I'm not condoning it in any way. But what I'm telling you is pharmakia is the same word. And the Greek word for sorceries is actually is pharmakia, I believe. Yes. I a couple times. But the point is, is that we're, we're, we're at a point now where there's so much damage. By the way, uh, Paul Hagstrom has the answer to PTSD. And what Paul is finding out, that a lot of people who have chronic pain, literally, when their hearts get healed, the pain goes away. Wow. When hearts get healed, the inflammation goes away. Trauma manifests itself in physical pain. You, dis, you uh, By the grace and the power of Almighty God and the spirit of the living God, when you take away that trauma, the pain, but i got to tell you something, Bruce. I err on the side of mercy, okay? And I'm not condoning. Now, somebody says, can LSD, if LSD takes away my headache? You take LSD, you're in for a trip of eternity, and outside the grace of God, it will take you straight to hell, or ecstasy, or any of the new designer. Sure. Very what? dangerous. Very, very dangerous. So I'm only speaking to cannabis, okay? And I've had people who are Christians say to me, but God's word said the herbs, of, you know, the, what it was, the herbs of healing for the field are for the healing of nations, you know? Right. Yeah, I can't address that because the Lord hasn't given me permission to address that. All I will say is this. I pray daily for the power of God to come into his people's lives so that as everyone who suffers tonight, I've said the greatest uh, undoing in my life has been having seen Jesus, having had fantastic words of prophecy prophesied over my life by people who have not known me, and then not being able to say to my blind listeners, be healed in Jesus' name. I can tell you this, as hard as my critics are on me, I cannot even tell you, they can't even touch how hard I've been on myself. And this is my issue with the Lord, it's not anyone else's issue. But I know this, the book of John says if all the books that were ever written in the world were to, or all the good deeds that Jesus ever did, all the books in the world couldn't contain it. That's right. Did not come short in that realm. But I got to tell you, it, it troubles me that I come short, for we all have fallen short of the glory of sure. God. But the bottom line is if the people of God would rise up, stand up, believe, and get empowered with the Holy Ghost. And by the way, that most Christians in America are in the same place that the book of Acts was, uh, you know, after the resurrection of Jesus. They haven't even heard there be such a Holy Spirit. I talk about the Holy Spirit on talk radio, and I'm accused by a Mormon uh, double agent of being a spiritist, okay? Oh, my goodness. And then, the, and, and, and so the thing is, is that a spiritist, come on, I don't believe that Jesus and Satan are buddies and that when we get to heaven that we have uh, perpetual sex with anybody's wife that we just kind of claim for our kingdom of debauchery. You see, the thing is, is that the church doesn't stand for anything. Listen, what do we stand for? If we're not standing for Jesus, the answer is we're, we're falling for Lucifer. I want to finish this one last paragraph of this, this prophecy, April 13, 1997. This is God ask, you know, ask, asking his people a question. Where will you stand, my people, when, uh, excuse me, where will you, when, I'm sorry, where will you stand, my people, when, when will you arise and go forth in the fullness and power of my anointing? Prepare, prepare, prepare for the battle even now rages. There is no safety for you by hiding in the shadows of denial. You are the children of the living God, armed with the precious and powerful blood of Jesus. It is one thing to sing about the devil being under your feet. It's quite another to tread on serpents and scorpions and truly crush the power of the evil one through your faith in my blood. Go forth, go forth, go forth. I have an email, by the way, Bruce, that came in. He said, James says, uh, Steve, he said, should the church uh, be storing food and arming? And then he says, DHS just bought up 500 million rounds. 
Well, I guess, ladies and gentlemen, shooting you once isn't enough. They got to shoot 300 million people, you know, uh, 1.3 times, or they got to shoot uh, 250 million people two times. A half a billion rounds. Actually, Jim, I think it was. I would say this: in all matters of preparation, we have some pretty amazing illustrations from the scripture okay we have the issue first and foremost of noah being told to build the ark amongst the mockery amongst the scoffery amongst the debauchery noah prepared an ark to the building uh, for the building and the saving of his family then we've got the marvelous joseph's dream joseph was the one to ultimately make a way for the children of 